This is another ownership video. One of the things, because um, since I've been doing these car business videos and talking about what I'm going through, and I've been doing this for 10 weeks, 10 weeks. I want you to think, for those of you who have children, when you brought your baby home, what were your expectations from your baby at 10 weeks? Flail their arms around, make noises, cry, poop, eat. You really didn't have a lot of expectations from a 10 week old baby. Yet, many people I have seen in the comments, why don't you just hire someone? There's this book called Rework. R-E, work. It's a really good book. I highly recommend you get it if you want to start a business. In this book, it talks about that you should do the job before you hire someone to do the job. Makes a lot of sense because if you do the job and you hire someone to do the job, you will know if they're getting over on you because you've done the job. It kind of goes back to Asian philosophy. Why is the Kung Fu master the Kung Fu master because he can beat up everybody in the dojo at the same time. That's why he's the Kung Fu master. And one of the things, and I'm going to keep talking about these fake YouTubers who's like, you can do this business. You can do this business. You can make all this money. And they leave out the pesky little details of, you know, starting a business. Now I feel that last week we, we turned the corner. We turned a corner and this is a 10 week old baby. That's what this business is. It's a 10 week old baby. It's not a even, it's not even a toddler. It's not even a teenager. It's not a, it's not an adult. It's a 10 week old baby. And I was looking at the calculations because this is one of the things that's happening. Since I'm buying used cars and people in America don't really take care of stuff. Um, what I'm finding out is the routine maintenance and services are rolling up real quick. Uh, I got two cars back and this is what really, really bites. When you have someone who has your car and they're not paying you and they bring it back to you dirty, broken, trashed, and then you have to do a service on it. So they cost you money by not paying you. They cost you money by not returning the vehicle so you can rent it to someone else. And then they broke stuff. So last week, I feel that that is the end of that cycle because I have GPS kill switches on seven cars. Virtually all my BMWs except one. I have the kill switches on. And what I'm getting ready to do, because um, I, I did buy another one, another car to replace the Porsche, and I still have some money left over. But what I, I want you guys to understand, this is a 10-week-old baby. It's still pooping on itself. Still can't feed itself. Wakes up in the middle of the night. And that's where we are with this business. I want you to think of this business in the terms of a life cycle of a baby. Because after a year, the baby's walking. The baby's saying a few words. And I guarantee you that this business is going to look radically different a year from now than it does right now. And once again, to the fake YouTubers, all these people who's like, you can do this business, you can make all this money. I mean, I see the titles. You know, doing this business, like I saw one video talking about wedding photography. Um, I knew someone who was a wedding photographer and it took him years to build up his reputation where people would book him. He said his first three years, he made hardly any money. First three years. So I want you guys to understand we're building businesses here. And I want you guys to understand that ownership is critical because I'm in the ownership position. 
I have 13 titles and I own 21 cars. So I got seven titles that are kind of like floating out there that will be coming into me and I'm getting ready to reshuffle the fleet. Uh, someone made a comment about that white 550. That fi white 550 is going to be gone. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm trying to build a reputation. And I'm going to switch out of my problematic cars first. They're gone first. And the essentially, the 550, its first rental was a rental to a hippie bogue. And I feel like, again, um, I, the BMW uh, 330, it rented out one, two, three, four times. Uh, the first person who rented it, that was a pretty good dude. Second dude who rented it was a good dude. Then the third person who rented it was this chick. Then the fourth person to rent it was this cigarette smoker. And we're starting to get past that. Because stories coming up. First GPS kill switch stories coming up. And it's going to be pretty funny. Because I was able to get my vehicle back in 24 hours. 24 hours. So this is what I mean by we, we've turned the corner. Because this is a 10-week-old baby. It's not even a toddler yet. And as we learn, as we build, and as we grow, because I know I've made some statements that some of y'all felt were egotistical, elitist, because everyone's like, go talk to so-and-so, talk to so-and-so. One person I was recommended to talk to founded his LLC four months before I did. Four months before I did. Four months. So not exactly a bunch of information, I feel, for someone who's been in business four months longer than I have. And it's a completely different market. Um, but one of the things that has happened, and I will say, I didn't know what I was getting into in this business. I was like, what's drinking the Kool-Aid? Who's drinking the Kool-Aid? You know, it's like, Start a um, car rental business, passive income. And I, I just saw all these videos that were saying this. And I made this much on Turo and I did this. And Justin Brubaker and his hire car videos. And, and this is why telling the truth is critical. Because you know why I didn't know what I was getting into? Because people weren't telling the truth. Except car b and b go to his channel you will see this dude then get no views i mean he put up a video get like 200 views and then samara's experience puts up a video because she's pretty she has long hair she has a very pleasant nice demeanor boom 15 30 000, 40 000. and samara i honestly think that some of her experiences she left out on youtube I honestly think because I've been doing this 10 weeks. I've had two cars stolen, had one car with the rear bumper hanging off. I had folks lose keys. I did not see any of this stuff on any YouTube video. Now, uh, Stefan Marquette put up a video recently. Shout out to Stefan talking about his car was stolen on Turo. And there are many of you, it's like, you know, Toro is so much better. The same stuff is happening on Toro. I will say, since Toro is a different demographic, it's less of it. But people are wrecking cars on Toro. People are stealing cars on Toro. People are keeping cars on Toro. And this is why I did not want the plug-in GPS. I literally had someone looking for it. In my car, someone that kept a car too long, I had to threaten to call the police on him to get my car back. He got a little salty, so he had to get smacked down, the verbal smackdown, because he was like, whoa, the way I went off on that clown. He was looking for the GPS. 
He was looking for the GPS. And this is why I wanted to have the hardwired GPS with the kill switch because the kill switch is going to be really prominent in this business because let's go ahead and look at what I've learned in, from my 10 week old baby. Where are the problems? The problems are with the nicer cars. I've had not one, not two, not three, not four, four people with the BMWs who were not paying and they didn't want to bring the car back. Didn't want to bring the car back. So, uh, and I got one um, BMW in the hands of someone who's, he's never been late. And I remember when I met him, he's like, yeah, man, I made like 5,000 on DoorDash, which tells me a lot about him. He actually is working. He's actually working. So one of the things, because essentially I'm going to give you some ratios. I feel that like 70, 70%, 70 someone says 60, 40%, but it's like 70% of the people in a higher car are good people. Um, they will take care of your car and bring it back to you. 30% yard bird, yard bird territory. And there are some people who can slide into the yard bird category. But once again, what I'm going through and, you know, I have to look to the future because right now it's pretty crappy. Like a 10 week old baby pooping on himself, throwing up on himself. You, you, you set him up and next thing you know, he's spitting up and drools coming. I, that's what I got. I got a 10 week old baby that's pooping on itself. And what's going to happen is once I get all these services done, then the cars are going to be good for about a year or two. And that's the thing that I'm going through. Then this is what I have to tell myself because like someone, and it doesn't happen when someone brings back a car when they're supposed to like to. It's always someone who kept a car and did not bring it back on time and did not bring it back in good condition. These are the cars I have to fix. These are the cars with the lights on and it's annoying as hell. Because first you ain't paying me, but you're using the car. You're depreciating the car. And then you get an attitude when I like bring it back because you don't want to bring it back. So going on, the day is Tuesday. So this month I should have the GPS kill switches in all of my, because I got two Range Rovers out. Well, three. One Range Rover, I'm not putting the GPS kill switch on it because it's gone. But there's two other ones I got to bring back in. And many of you have asked me, I'm not going to tell you what kind of GPS kill switch I'm using. I'm not putting that out there for public information because here's why. And this, this, is, one, this is something I learned from my 10-week-old baby. Play a player, snuck back to drop the car off, not once but twice. Another guy. He dropped the car off in the middle of the night. So when people are not paying you, there's a level of shame and they don't want to face you. Uh, the girl, the white girl with the camera, she dropped it off. They don't want to face you when they know they owe you money because I mean, if you are, if you have any character and any decency, it's like, that's messed up. I owe this person money. I can't pay this much for the money. I really don't want to look at this person. And that, that, that taught me a lot. And this is my GPS kill switch strategy. I'm not going to like tell them I cut the car off. When I get that call, it's like the car is off. I'm going to be like, oh my goodness, that's terrible. Tell you what, leave the key in the car and I will have it towed. Because I've learned that people who are behind, they don't want to be confronted. So essentially, this method will ensure that I get the key back because I'm not being confrontational. Because when I was thinking about this, it's like, yeah, I turned your car off. And that, you know, it's like that might make someone who is not emotionally stable tear up my car or throw the key away. These keys are expensive. The key for this car, this key, 
I believe it's $850, the key for this car. So essentially uh, with the first GPS kill story, that worked well, she left the key. Because essentially I want them to leave the key. I don't want them to, oh, he, he gonna turn the car off, mm, throw this key away. I, I don't want them to throw the key away. I want them to leave the key because if I don't get the key back, that's gonna be 200 to $800 to replace the key. And I'm like, I don't want to go through all that. So essentially is the car is like, Oh, the car's not, it won't start. I'll get it towed. I become a resource. I become very helpful. I'm very compassionate because these people essentially, they're not going to be able to keep my cars for weeks and play this game. Like I'm bringing it like, you know, how I'm going to get back. I'm like, you got friends, there's Uber, there's, we're not playing that game anymore. So essentially, because, and also what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut the car off at 12 hours. I'm not going to wait a full 24 and I'm going to tell you why. I got this car back in 27 hours and it wasn't trashed, but it was dirty. And one of the things I'm coming to understand with these DoorDash drivers, these Uber drivers, these Instacart drivers, is they spend a lot of time in the car and they kind of live in that car. And one of the things that I, I'm beginning to understand is it is imperative to get the car back as quick as possible if they stop paying. Now, I may get caught on this because someone may, because essentially, I have like three renters. They will fall into 24 hours, but they will pay without me having to message them. So like I was like today, I had four lates and I said, he's going to pay. He's going to pay. And literally when I went through the app and said he was going to pay, they paid. So I went down to two lates and one of them, I'm going to have to send a letter because that car doesn't have a GPS kill switch on it. And, um, just get my stuff back. But like I said, going forward, anything that I put on the platform is going to have a GPS kill switch before I rent it because I have no clue to who I'm renting to. And y'all, y'all are adorable. You know, you know, put, put, put a thousand dollar deposit on two credit cards. These folks don't have credit cards. This is an economically fragile demographic. They don't have credit cards. There are some people on the platform who do have credit cards. And these are my best renters. I can tell. They rent by the week. Um, and essentially, I, I had someone rent a car for a week. She's picking it up tomorrow. And it went through and was instantly approved. She's an older lady. I like the older po population because the older people usually pay their bills. So... We're going to get away from the com confrontation. I'm going to be very compassionate. Oh, man. That's a shame that vehicle isn't working. I'm going to get that towed. And I'm going to ask them to tell me where it is. Because I don't know if this, this chick, she sent a message. She said, did you get your car? Because essentially, she never told me that it wouldn't start. But she was like, but, you know, uh, when I get in that story, y'all going to be rolling. Y'all going to be rolling. But essentially, it is very important to get your asset back as quick as possible because this is how hire car works. Once you rent out your car, it gets an algorithm and it rents out faster the second time. Because currently, I have three, have five cars. Well, actually, this is not true. I have three cars because two of these cars are rented and they're picking them up tomorrow. And then by Friday, I'm probably going to have these other two. And I got one car that seems to be really hard to fix. And as soon as I get the title, I'm getting rid of that. So I'm getting rid of uh, the Mini. I'm getting rid of the 550. I'm getting rid of the Range Rover. So those are three cars definitely on the hit list that I'm getting rid of because the Range Rover, which I paid too much, now, that was the lesson learned. I paid too much for that car. It doesn't, and you know, in my opinion, it's, it's very nice. 
It's got the nice wood interior and stuff, and it's faster than the other Range Rovers. It is way fast, but you know, it's a 2008. And what I'm going to do going forward, once again, just taking my information, um, the car I bought Saturday was a 2010. And I'm going to tell you why. 2006s and 7s, after two years of rental, I can only sell these cars for three, maybe four, five thousand. Maybe. Because they're going to be close to 200K miles. So I will be able to make rental income for them for two years. And then when I get ready to dump them, I'm not going to get a lot for them. So what I'm going to move, and this is going to be really helpful once I get my dealer's license, where I can go to the auction and get these cars, because this this is where the, getting my dealer's license is going to be really, really helpful. I go to the dealer's license, dealer's auction, I get the title. So once I bring this car back and have it checked out and stuff, because essentially what I'm going to do is put a dealer's plate on it, take it to the mechanic, and essentially, we, you know, this is part of the new intake process. We're going to like go through it. If it needs service, oil changes, everything, just do it. Just go ahead and spend the money, get all that out the way. Because once these people rent the cars and they start rolling, this stuff is going to be accelerated. And once I do that, then I can go to the DMV, get the tag the next day. Because the tag, the paper tags, like the Uber and Lyft drivers are having problems with the paper tags. So we're going to get that straightened up. But it is my push to get 2010 or younger or older or later models, 2010, 2011, 2012 cars. And this is something else too, because when I do the video, how to buy a car for hire a car in Toro, I'm going to talk about this in depth. But essentially, these cars are going to be in the rental fleet for two years and the older the car is, the more, because I can get a bunch of BMWs and Mercedes, 2004s, 2005s. Um, I can get them all day long for like four and 5,000 bucks. But you can't, you can't use those for Uber. You can't use them for uh, Lyft. You can use them for DoorDash. You can use them for DoorDash, but you cannot use them for any of the ride share platforms. So, I already know that. And also, hold on a second. Also, with, um, like, this is a big thing. The newer the car, the more likely all of the sockets are to work. Because I got a few cars where the sockets don't work. And the sockets for the chargers and stuff, that's a big, big, big issue. Uh, the 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 first kill switch she went out and got like an auxiliary cord so she can plug her phone in into the radio so probably going forward because this changes a lot of my assumptions because i was going to try to keep my cars you know under seven thousand but that ain't gonna work because those cars are dogged out those cars have a lot of issues those cars um are not going to be able to make it to potentially three years because if I get a car that's a good renter and it doesn't have a, you know, like say it, like this Acura, I can keep this Acura in the fleet for three years easy because when I got it, it only had 98,000 miles. So if we put 30,000 miles a year on it, I, I can do that for three years. And I may well do that because it's an Acura. So um, I, I had a lot of people and I saw one come. It's like, he should have waited till he got his dealer's license. You know how much time and experience I would have lost? Uh, essentially, they still haven't got my office set up. So I, there are certain things I have to do before I can even apply for my dealer's license. And that should be August. Hopefully, August, September, I get my dealer's license. Because essentially, one of the things I'm not overly concerned with is, yes, I'm paying more for the cars than I want to. However, here's something when you buy a car at auction. When you go buy a car at auction and you just look at it, you don't know what you're getting. And at least with a few dealers that I know, I've come to know, they actually do things to the cars. They go through the cars, they get certain things fixed, like uh, the dude with the BMW, I told him the brakes, he said, I get it fixed. He ordered the parts, the next day the car was fixed. So there are some really good dealers that I will buy more cars from because I know that they kind of go through them and fix them. 
because that's something I'm gonna have to do because essentially any car that I buy at auction, I'm gonna have to take it to my mechanic and like go through it before I even rent it out. Take it to my mechanic, go through it because here's another thing. And this, this is a beautiful thing. Once I get my dealer's license, like say I buy a car and my mechanic goes, it's like, it's gonna be like six, $7,000 to fix this. Guess what? I could just take it back to the auction, run it through the auction again, get my money back and buy another car. So my dealer's license is gonna be really, really helpful with this business, like in, in so many ways. Because if I get a car, like let's, let's say with the Mini, if I had my dealer's license, I bought that Mini at auction and it was just so problematic, I could just run it through the auction and it becomes someone else's problem. So yeah, this is a 10 week old baby. And I am gonna teach you guys how to start a real business that makes real money by being honest with you because um, Hire Car has reached out to me for a sponsorship deal. I haven't signed up for it. I'll probably sign up for it for the night because I want to put out videos because even with all of the, the BS and the crap, because Hertz goes through this, National, Avis, Enterprise, all of them go through this. This ain't just me. They're just not talking about it. Um, I want you to think, why are all these billion dollar companies still in business? Because they're making money. And once I go ahead and get all these services fixed, because essentially what I'm gonna do is take that in my next round of intake, I'm gonna do that up front. So it won't be a surprise. So I won't be getting a, a phone call at six in the morning, like the check engine light came on, or this came on, or that came on. I, I won't, you know, I, I'll get all that stuff done. And, um, I'm gonna buy newer cars because I got a BMW where the sunroof, messed up the sunroof, it's $3,000 because the whole sunroof has to be replaced. And I just told them, I was like, you know, close the sunroof and give me the car back. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna rent that car and make it earn money, make it earn the money so it can repair itself versus me just keep coming out because you know most of the the services are five hundred to a thousand bucks for the services. I got a Camry that needs full service, and the guy told me once this is done, you probably won't need that for two or three years, and I, I'm probably going to keep that one. I was going to get rid of it, but since I'm doing this service, I'm going to keep it. And then um, my goal is to buy one more car this month, and then probably just chill on buying cars for August because August is going to be the month. August is going to be the month because I'm getting all these maintenance maintenance and repairs done. I'm doing this stuff and essentially August I should have GPS kill switches on everything that is problematic. Uh, if I keep the Range Rovers, I'm going to put GPS kill switches on them. And you know, any, and also with me buying cars, and let, let's talk about this. Um, since I now have, like, I have an Acura. The Acura might sit for two or three days before it rents. But the BMWs, they will go out just like, I got w one BMW that's going out tomorrow. Actually, probably two. Two are going out tomorrow. And this is why it's so frustrating when someone... <clears throat> was keeping my car and they would bring it back to me and I have to do stuff because here's something else. When they got to order parts, your car could be down for a week or two. A week or two because right now they're scrambling to get parts. So that's another issue with, one again, once again, why you want to get your car back as soon as possible. Because from my experience, if they keep your car and they're not paying you, they're going to mess it up. Like this Acura in three years, it's going to be beat up. The girl curbed another wheel. She only had the car three days, three days. And I'm just sitting here, you know, I've curbed one of my wheels. And it was because I didn't understand that there was like, a, a, I don't even know what these things are called, but it's like where the curb rises up and it was right there and I only 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 
uh, curved a little bit of it, just just one spoke. I mean, unless I point it out, you can't even see it. And on that last X5, um, I didn't curb any of the wheels. In my Porsche, I've not curbed one wheel. And part of this is I own these cars and I care about them. And what I know that the, the Acura is going to be beat up. It's going to be beat up. And the BMWs are probably going to be beat up. And that's why I need to extract. That's why I'm going to rent them for two years. The first year is to get it paid for. Uh, some of these cars will be paid for in seven, eight months. And then the second year is nothing but profit. That's what the second year is for. Nothing but profit. Uh, this will uh, absorb any repairs, any maintenance costs. That whole year be nothing but profit. And that's when I will start really, really making a lot of money because I don't have car payments, but right now I have repair costs, which are kind of like car payments because, um, you know, I'm going to be more careful. Like the car I bought this weekend, I did the Kelly Blue Book. I did a Carfax on it because, you know, some of these cars, I didn't do that. I just bought them. They look good. They drove good. And then I got surprised on the back end. So my process is to do a Carfax, Kelly Blue Book. Also, you 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 got to call the dealer and make sure they have the car before you pull the Carfax. Because a lot of the times, a lot of these dealers are lazy. They'll have cars on car gurus on their website. They sold. And you're sitting there like pulling the Carfax and then you call them like I go on, and it's like, oh, we sold that two weeks ago. So call them, make sure they have it. And also typically Monday through Friday, cars don't move that quick, but they move like lightning on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You know, if you, you know, like I said, I went to look at one car, someone was there test driving it and that car is still on the website. And that, there was someone there. He is like, he got approved. He was, I don't know if his, he didn't have a down payment. I don't know what happened, but that car is still on their website. And I've noticed that cars are not moving as fast as they once did. So we're kind of coming out of this. But yeah, guys, this is a baby business. It's a baby. It's a 10 week old baby. And some of you who I can't really blame you because you're fed this low information diet 24 seven. You got all these people like you can start this business, you can make all this money and they're leaving out the pesky details where I'm not leaving out any details. I know some of y'all be laughing at me. I, I understand some of it's funny. Some of it's funny. It's sad, but funny. And essentially this is what you more than likely will go through once you start any business not just a car rental business, any business, unless you get lucky to start an internet business or to do YouTube or blow up on YouTube. Like uh, Kelly Stamps makes like 40, 50,000 a month from YouTube. Good money, good money. And um, you know, that's why everyone's trying to make, cause essentially all you do is you sit down, create content, you get a bunch of views, you make a lot of money. And one of the things that so many people don't understand about this YouTube game is the top 100,000 YouTubers make 90% of the YouTube money. I'm in that top 90, 10%. I'm in that top 10%. And I only make good month, a bad month is 5,500, 6,000 a month. A good month, I make make twelve. I'm in that top 10%. And what I mean is I could, you know, if I didn't have such an extraordinary lifestyle, I could live off my YouTube money if I was an average person. Even on a bad month, a bad month is 60,000 a year, a good month is 140. So let's average it out, I make 80. I could live off that. Actually, I could pay all my bills that I have with that YouTube money very easily. So this is one of the reasons that you see these YouTubers who like doing all these challenges and stuff is to get the views, to get that YouTube money and not necessarily to inform you or educate you about a business like I am. Sad, but true. So you gotta be really, really suspicious. There's a guy, uh, pocket watchers with JT. 
he is going after some people. He recently went after him 5,000, how to turn credit into income. And like, as soon as I saw him, a lot of that stuff I knew was dubious, but I did not do any review videos. I'm just like, that ain't gonna work. And JT is breaking it down. <laughs> he is breaking it down. And you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's real interesting because if he was to do uh, a reaction to me, he wouldn't be critical at all because I'm not lying. I'm not making stuff up. I'm not telling you stuff to get views. I'm not telling you stuff to get your money. So yeah, ownership is still where it is because like August is going to be a great month. Uh, this month, I'm kind of trending toward 18, maybe 20. Uh, I don't know because uh, Yardbirds, uh, these people, like I would have been at 8,000 if it wasn't for these clowns keeping my cars. And going forward, by the end of July, you will not be able to keep money in my nicer inventory because I can just cut it off. So that, that's going to stop because that was something that I just really wasn't prepared for. I was like, you can't pay, just bring it back. I had no clue that these people would be milking it and just taking advantage and literally destroying the cars. I had no clue. That that caught me by, I caught me off guard. That really, really did. Um, I was just, because I'm not that kind of person. But there's a segment on high car that is that kind of person. And these people will tear your stuff up because they have no home training and they have no regard for other people's property. And this is the game you got to play with higher car. Like I said, that's 70%. That's good. You got to, if you got, if one of the 30% gets your car on higher car, you got to get your car back from them as quick as possible, put it on the platform, and hopefully one of the 70% rents your car because um, that 70% is nice. And, you know, like I said, most of these dudes who are really working, they're making money, they'll be late a day. And essentially, like I already know, because essentially I already told them like, you know, you get two days late, you're gonna have to bring it back. And um, this would be with my Acras, because I have two Acras out. <clears throat> I got two Range Rovers, the BMW, but the BMW X5 has a kill switch on it. And this guy, he's a speeder. I'm not messaging them because once again, I'm going to be real low key with this kill switch business because I don't want them looking for it. I don't want them to be aware that it's even on there. Even after they get late and I turn it off, it's like I said, it's going to be just a facade. Like, oh, oh my goodness. It, it won't start. Leave the key in there. I'll get it towed. I'm so sorry this happened to you. No confrontation because uh, seriously, when you get confrontational, this is when people start tearing up your stuff. This is when people start throwing away keys and stuff like that. So we will be working on that and uh, we have a lot of stuff. Also, uh, we're getting toward the middle of the month, which is we're gonna get into some new training. We're gonna get into it. So I'm gonna be readjusting that. I will be opening up B-School for Hustlers and we will be getting into it and it's gonna be really, really rugged. It's gonna be rugged. We're gonna get into a lot of different stuff. And once again, since I have set up a new business, LLC, EIN, business checking, and a business credit card. Um, before I go, I wanna talk about this. I was making so much money, I didn't really care about business credit. And that was a mistake because if I had started building business credit years ago, I have about $3 million worth of business credit right now. I estimate easily. And I'm just sitting there like, that was a mistake. And one of the things is on this life, on this lesson, you life in, in life, you learn these lessons. Because essentially, I never, I didn't prepare myself for business credit because I was able to do whatever I wanted to do with cash. I mean, I just didn't see the need. I didn't see myself even opening up this type of business. And once I go ahead and get the business credit established in the line of credit, I'm gonna buy more cars. 
And once again, with new guidelines, we're trying to buy 2010 at the least oldest because when they're so old, and also they're just literally gonna fall apart because um, this is what I'm learning. Because when I do my how to buy cars for Toro and hire car video, I'll let, put all these steps and stuff in there. But that's all I got for you guys. Um, tomorrow's the 14th. So the 15th, I'm going to be dropping probably two or three videos in one day talking about the new training and stuff. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.